right, I want to show you a super cool little experiment here. I've got this wheel um, hanging by the string from the ceiling. The um, wheel's pretty heavy. It's maybe 15 pounds, something like that. Um, what you'll notice is if I, if I lift it up like this um, and then just kind of let it go, right, gravity just pulls the, the wheel down into that kind of vertical position. So, right, you have the, the weight of the wheel kind of acting over here, and the wheel is kind of pegged right here. And so by pulling down here, it causes the wheel to rotate like this, and, and it just kind of flops down so that it's vertical like this. Um, well, that changes if I uh, give the wheel a spin first. So what I'm going to do is spin it so that the top is, is going to kind of be coming toward you. Okay? Um, so three, two, one, go. We'll get this guy spinning. And now I'm going to let it go. And what you notice is instead of flopping down, the wheel's just kind of walking, maintaining this uh, horizontal orientation and walking around in this direction. Right. Let's take a look if I spin the other way. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the top going um, away from you. Um, so let's spin it like that. And now we'll let it go. Three, two, one, go. Again, you notice the wheel is kind of maintaining this sort of horizontal, the axis is maintaining this horizontal orientation, um, but the wheel is precessing in the other, uh, in the other direction. Just a tiny bit of background that you'll need for understanding what the heck is happening there is a, a little bit of info about how physicists talk about which way things are spinning. So if you see this thing spinning, you could say that it's going um, counterclockwise, but of course that would depend on which side of the wheel you're standing on. Um, so what physicists will do to avoid that ambiguity is they use what's called a right-hand rule, so something that's rotating in this sense. Physicists will say the sense of rotation is up out of the, up out of the wheel like this. If it were rotating the other way, then what we would do is we would say that the sense of rotation is down into the wheel. Just like if you were turning the screw, the, the screw would, would tighten or go down into the ground. If, if you turn it this way and if you turn it the other way, um, then it would back out. So again, if something's rotating this way, the physicist would say that it's rotating in this sense or up out at you. If it's rotating this way, the physicist will say the sense of rotation is uh, say down into the ground. And that actually works for say objects that are even rotating like this. Again, you would say the sense of rotation is up out of the page or out of the ground at you. And going this way, it would be down into the, into the ground. When the wheel is not spinning, um, and I, I go and let this thing go, you have a, a force acting over here downward, and you have an axis of rotation that's here. And so what that's going to do, by pulling down this way with the axis of rotation here... So what's happening here is that there's an axis of rotation right here where the string attaches. Gravity is acting out here on the center of mass of the wheel, um, and since it's acting out away from the axis, that's going to generate a torque. Um, so clearly that's just going to make the wheel want to kind of flop down, moving this counterclockwise direction. Another way to view this is since mg is generating a torque um, counterclockwise, the system here needs to gain angular momentum toward you, and that's why you generate this kind of counterclockwise rotation as the wheel just sort of flops down. That's going to make a torque that is that is toward you, and so the system is going to need to generate um, angular momentum toward you by generating this type of a rotation. So right, if you let it go, then down goes the wheel like this. And so you get angular momentum. Torque is causing the angular momentum vector to grow toward you. Okay. If I spin the wheel, what's happening is, so if I spin the top toward you, so now the wheel's rotating like this, what that's doing is that is making the angular momentum vector right at this moment is pointing toward me. Okay, so the L vector points toward me. Angular momentum is toward me. Right? Now, the torque of the system is pointing toward you. Okay? Because if I, when I, once I let go of this thing, again, gravity is pulling out here and here's the axis. So that's going to make a torque vector toward you. Well, torque is dl dt. Well, if l currently points toward me, but the change in that vector needs to point toward you, that means this, this angular momentum vector needs to start rotating toward you. We have the exact same situation as before, except now that the wheel is spinning, it itself has angular momentum already that's pointing toward me. 
But like we had before, we have a torque that's pointing out of the page directly at you. Well, so the change in angular momentum needs to point toward you. Well, we already have this angular momentum vector going to the right there, and so what happens is that angular momentum vector needs to sweep toward you. The torque is toward you, so the system needs to gain angular momentum toward you, so that vector is just going to need to sweep toward you in this direction. So in an instant after this picture is taken, the angular momentum vector is going to sweep from pointing that way toward pointing a little bit toward you, which means the wheel itself is going to have to kind of rotate away from you. And so what should happen when I let this thing go is that it should start rotating such that it goes, this angular momentum vector shifts toward you. Well, so let's check out that that indeed is what happens. So I get the thing spinning and I'm gonna let it go. And you notice that is the case, that the angular momentum vector is shifting in the direction that we predicted, okay? And so now if I do the opposite, if I have the before letting go of the disc, if I have the disc spinning this way where the top is going away from you, okay, then at this moment the angular momentum vector is pointing away from me. Finally in this last scenario everything's exactly the same except the wheels rotating the opposite direction so the angular momentum vector points away from me instead of toward me. Um, but the torque is still set up in this case such that it's toward you. So again, that angular momentum vector is gonna to need to sweep toward you. So now the wheel is gonna sweep in such a way that it rotates toward you. That angular momentum vector is gonna go from pointing in this direction toward pointing in this direction. So you'll see that now that when I release the wheel, it's gonna rotate in the opposite direction. Right, but the torque that's created by gravity is still pointing toward you. So I've got this angular momentum vector that's currently pointing that way for this wheel. And the torque, or the change in angular momentum, needs to um, point toward you. And so what's going to happen is this angular momentum vector is going to want to shift this way. And so what happens is when I spin the top away from you like this and let go, the prediction is that the wheel should rotate, start rotating toward you. So we let it go, and then there it goes. So that effect is called gyroscopic precession.